Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for staying with us. Now, throughout the show, if you have any questions, comments, contributions, we want to hear from you. So use the hashtag Breakfast Daily and I will supply 0550-585-832 for us to hear what you're thinking. Our personality today is a very powerful woman. We're not going to talk about her job <laughs> and her corporate hat. We're going to find out about her life. What was life like as a child? Does she always dream of being this big woman that she is today? What challenges has she faced and what lessons can she share with us so that we also can be inspired by her? Talking about Nanaya Jantua, who is the former director of public relations and external affairs of PURC, that's the Public Utilities Regulations Commission, and current CEO of Spectra Innovation. So we're going to learn about Spectra Innovation later. But for now, we're going to talk about her childhood. Good morning, Hanaya. Good morning, Jesus. How are you? Oh, fine. Thank you, my Thank dear. Thank you so much for spending your Friday morning with me. You're welcome, my dear. Now, let's start with your childhood. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Kumasi. Okay. Um, my father is uh, F.A. Jantua. Okay. My father, used to, he's alive. He, he used to be a Kwame Nkrumah's minister. He actually stood with Kwame Nkrumah to fight for the independence wow. of Ghana, yes. Wow. I grew up in a very highly charged political home. Hmm. Um, there was a lot of political activity in my home as a child. And I remember uh, during those days, notably when the PMFJ days, when there was this issue of union government and this group of people um, stood up against a champion wow. that they didn't want the union government. They actually met in my father's house. How old were you at the time? I think I, I was young, wow. but I was really involved. I was the one who used to carry their materials. Wow. Yes, and these were seditious materials in quotes. So that any time I used to sit with them, and the group was made up of the current president, mm -hmm. um, Pa Willi, uh, at the time, a free far and my uncle, KSP Jantua, who has passed away, and a few others who came together to agitate against the union government. Mm. But looking back, even though I was young, I believe that maybe if we had allowed it to happen, it would have bring, uh, brought cohesion. Because I remember most of the people were of the UP tradition mm -hmm. and the CPP tradition. Yeah. But when it came to the interest of Ghana, they came together. together yeah. And what did that tell you as a child? It told me as a child that for me, as I was growing, I didn't see that when it comes to politics, it should divide us. Mm -hmm. Because my mother is UP. That is the MPP tradition. Mm -hmm. And my father is CPP. And they've been married for 70 years. Wow. My mother's best friend was Victor Uso. Mm -hmm. I remember Victor Uso, he was... He stood on the ticket of the uh, PFP in 1979. Mm -hmm. And any time Victor Usu came to Kumasi, my mother had to cook soup, food, and take it to him. And my daddy was okay. Mm -hmm. And I always, I have an article that I'm even writing is about when the jailer met the jailed. Mm -hmm. A free fire jailed my dad. Yes, after the 66 school. But when he came to Ghana, they came together, General Afifa, if you ever yeah, heard yeah, any. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, I mean... How it, was that like for your dad? He, he Even was just okay. Forgive, the, the, the whole process of forgiveness. Yes, my father just saw it as politics. He didn't take it personal? No, he didn't take it personal. So if my father could sit with Afifa... My mother told me that when my father was in 1966 after the coup, when my father was the minister for a Greek, and when he was jailed then. My mother went to see a free fat to intercede, like, on the quiet, because uh, one of the people who um, staged the coup was my grandfather's protege. Hmm. So they went to see him. My free fat said, um, if I could speak in Chi. Yes, please. Oh, so your husband could be in for a <laughs> yes, long time. <laughs> Why? Because my father was a member of the Communist Party. Oh, yes. that must have broken your mom. Yes. But, I mean, eventually he came up. But the most important the lesson that me I learned as a child is that you shouldn't, politics shouldn't divide us. But didn't that 
was there ever a time where you felt like I just want my mom and dad to myself? I don't want the, I want I don't want to share them with the country. No. I don't want strangers in my house. I just want mommy and daddy and just us no, kids. No. I mean you couldn't do that because that was my daddy's life. My daddy worked with the PNDs and I remember one day Rollins came to the house and my mommy didn't want my daddy to be part of the PNDC. Mm -hmm. So my mommy asked me to go and tell Rollins that my daddy is not in. But he was who? Yes. So I went and I said, my mommy said my daddy is not in. So it's like I, I grew up in that kind of environment. And that is what, I mean, we were used to. Hmm. And there were raids here and there. Soldiers would come and raid the house. And wow. You, yes, and you are there. And that is your life. And you didn't find it weird at all? Like when you mm. watch TV, didn't you want to just have the, one of those no. regular life where you just watch TV all day and no powerful people coming in and no, out No, but I remember my dad once told me that as I carry those documents on my back, he told me that you have to protect these um, us. When these documents are found, then we are in jail forever. Wow. Then we cannot go through the process of making sure that a champion, general champion, does not subjugate himself. So I remember one day I fell asleep as a child. I mean, I was tired because I used to sit with these adults in the night, and I just somebody just bumped into the room. It was a soldier. Wow. Yes. And you were not afraid? I was conscientized that I shouldn't be afraid. Huh. So, because they knew, for some reason, they knew that the documents were with me. Wow. And once those documents are gotten, then it means my, everybody is in trouble. How old were you, though? I think about 10 Ten years, <laughs> years old. I was young. <laughs> <laughs> so, our viewers, I will have to remind you again. That if you have any questions or comments or contributions to make to the conversation, let us hear them with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550-585-832. I've been enjoying the conversation so far. It seems like you were a fearless yes. young woman. Yeah, my daddy, I remember when I was in school, a boy beat me up. I think I was five years old and our school was very close to ours. And I rushed home. My daddy said, why are you rushing home to come and tell me? My daddy is a lawyer and he has his, he's a lawyer and a pharmacist. So he was a private sector in politics, everything. He said, why are you coming to tell me? I said, because somebody beat me. He said, go and beat that boy and come and show me how you beat him. You're joking. Yes. because but you were just five. You're yes, a little girl. He said that the world is a hard place. Hey. So you need to know how to live and you're a woman. So I had to go back and strategize how to beat the boy. <laughs> but wasn't that not a bit much for you? Because no, I mean, it wasn't. I mean, they, that is the way they. It's like the boot way, camp. I, that's the way I was brought up. It's not boot. My father had a certain interest in me to, to be strong. Mm -hmm. And because of the kind of environment, like I was telling you, this soldier entered the room. I wanted to take the bag from me. Wow. So what did you do? I didn't do anything. I. I screamed, not knowing General FIFA was in, in the loo next door. Wow. So he came in and then had a struggle so I could run away. But I had carved the route for myself whenever there is a raid. Wow. So that I could get out of the house with the documents. And my job was that any time that the raids came, that the soldiers came to raid and scatter everybody, I had to make sure I got the current president out of the house. Because he was the youngest. And oh. they said he was going to be a president in future. Wow. So they don't want him to be tainted by prison or anything. So my job was to make sure that any time they came, then I had to get him out through the back door. Was that not a bit much for you? That's a daunting task for a, a child. For me, it's... <laughs> it was your reality. Yes, I mean, I, I like that. It was my reality. Wow. So on this occasion when I remember very well... When I recounted when the soldiers barged in, I had fallen asleep. The first name that came out was Nanado. Wow. Because then I thought I had failed. Because by now I had, should have gone out to get him out. Hmm. But for some reason, when I got to my route, his car wasn't parked there. Wow. So then I had to scale the wall, got I've carved the route for myself, and I ran away. 
How old were you? I was 10, I think. 10, 10 years old? Yes. <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. So what did you do for fun with other kids as, as a teenager? Fun. <laughs> was there anything like fun in your childhood? <laughs> <laughs> like playing with Barbie dolls and stuff? I wasn't a Barbie doll person. Clearly, you're carrying documents Yes, at yes, I wasn't a Barbie doll person. I, I didn't have the luxury of... Because of who my parents, my father was, I didn't have the luxury of opening up too much. But my best place of play was the Zongos. Why? I don't know. I had an affinity to play in the Zongos, and my daddy really didn't like it mm. because he thought it made me too hard. But, I mean, I had all my friends coming from the Zongos. I would go to Akotia Line, go to such places, learn how to play and do karate and all that. <laughs> I had this notion that I had to protect myself wow. in this world. In this world. But, I mean, I was also a Christian. Hmm. I became born again very early. Okay. And most of the things that I did was more towards um, going to church and all that. But I think I was a tomboy. I mean, really, I didn't do any bad Did you see the stuff. other girls like, why is she so feminine? Yes, yes. And I they mean, look at you like... Why are you so masculine? Yeah, that was that's true. I mean, I, I used to wear shorts and, um, <laughs> but I I wasn't a girly girly person, and I didn't play with Barbie dolls. So did you hang out more with guys than girls? I have more friends who are guys even now. Why why is that? Do you think it has anything to do with your dad's influence on you? Um, I think it's because maybe I didn't have too many brothers. Hmm. Um, Kwame, Kwame Jantua is like my only brother that I grew up with. And he left home early to go to school in London to do law. So I think I, there was a gap and my dad too wasn't very much available. Mm -hmm. um, he was always, you wouldn't, you wouldn't find him at your PTA because he's either in prison or he's been bundled off to a cell somewhere because he was a vociferous politician. Yeah. And you say it as it is. And it's always landed him into trouble. So one day you wake up and he's not at home. How you, did that make you feel? To nothing. Hear your dad is in jail? You just go look for him. You so will you be go afraid around, that no, something no, no, has you happened go around, to You know that if he's not at home, then he's bundled to either Kumasi prison or some as a quad cell or some place. And that didn't make you sad? No, 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 because you, have, normal. you just go and look for him. And when we go and he's sleeping on the floor, we find mats for him wow. to, to sleep on because we know eventually he will come. I mean, it was a normal thing. I remember one time they came. My big sister is also a lawyer, and they were going to take him away. And my sister said, where is your warrant? Mm -hmm. And that is what saved the whole team. Wow. Yes. And they didn't have a warrant. So that one, that day we were relieved. But they went for a warrant and came, came back. back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they warrant and came back. So, I mean, it's normal. What did your dad's life, your mom's commitment, even your siblings teach you about public service and, and, and living a, a life of service to the country you're from? I, I, my father was selfless. It wasn't about money. I remember when he was the Ashanti Regional Minister under the PNDC. A Lebanese man was looking for a permit to cut to saw timber, and I think he didn't qualify. And the man brought him a whole load of cash, and my daddy sent him away. And I, I usually eavesdropped. I mean, I was I, I turned into an adult already, so <laughs> I was in the middle of all these things. So I asked him, "Daddy, why didn't you collect the money?" He said, "You can never survive taking bribes." So I saw how selfless my daddy was. And he said, if you want to do politics, you have to work hard. That is why I have all these businesses and your mother is running it. Yeah. My mom wasn't educated. Yeah. I mean, she wasn't educated like my dad. Like formal education. Yeah, formal education. But she ran most of the business, especially the pharmacy shops and all that. Certainly the legal uh, chambers, she couldn't run it. But my daddy did it part time. And he, oh, he taught me to be selfless. Mm. And in all my time in public service, I, maybe that is what drove me, that once you take on a responsibility, you need to do it well and do it very well.
Let's talk about your time in public service. <laughs> so as a kid, yeah. did you see yourself that this is what I would want to do? I would also want to work in public service or were you fascinated by just let me go do the private sector because I've lived with this my whole life and I want a different experience? I wanted to do, be a throughout politician. Why? From raw start. Because that is what I knew as a child to do. And I wanted to do so. I wanted to, to dance. I wanted to be an an actress. Mm -hmm. I also wanted to sell because I used to sell mangoes. Wow. We had mango trees in our home and I used to pluck and sell back. But my daddy would warn me that you don't get out of the gate. So we would negotiate and say that I will sit behind the gate and don't get out of the gate. So the so customers will come yeah, the customers the gate. will come through the gate and I'll sell to them. <laughs> then I was also doing business with some prisoners who were selling copper rings and all that wow. and nobody should listen to that <laughs> <laughs> so but i'll sit behind the the gate, the gate. And, and i'll sell my things and when i put money in my i had the butterscotch container then my brother kwame would go and take it and <laughs> spend it for you <laughs> spend it for me <laughs> so as i was growing up i mean i i got admission to go to tech mm -hmm. as a sixth form to do social science then I decided that, no, I want to do journalism. Why journalism? Because I, I loved it. I, when I saw people on TV. <laughs> like we are right Yes, now. like we are right now. Those days on GT, <laughs> it was only GTV. So I, I loved it, and I see how they were talking. And I'll just pick uh, maybe a stick or something, and I'll be talking. Then I told my dad that I'm not going to take it. Are you crazy? I said, Daddy, I'm not going to tech. I'm going to the Institute of Journalism to do journalism. He said, you want to die as a pauper. Why did he equate it that yes, way? Yes, he said, journalism, you can't make any money. Aww. And that most of his friends who are journalists are poor. So why do you want to self-destruct yourself? These were his words. I said, Daddy, I'm going to do journalism. Well, you taught me to be strong. Today, I'm strong on you. He said, eh. I said, I'm going to do journalism. I'm going to Accra. I'm going to do, I think I was 18. So he said, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. I said, wow. I don't care. You're kidding. Yes, I'm going to do journalism. So to cut a long story short, I came to GIJ. My mother supported me. He wasn't hurt? Was he hurt by Yes, you? he was hurt. He didn't talk to me for a while. Like a couple of months? No, no, no. Till I finished school. Even when I was in school, one day we had to do this internship with a place that we went to. And when I came back, the school was in, like, turmoil. So I said, what's going on? And everybody said, ah, you didn't tell us that your father is a fake actor. Your father has come to the school. He's gone to the hostel to see where you are sleeping. Wow. I said, but that is not his business. He said, eh, but everybody, I mean, he Wait, came. Afraid. Yes, everybody was afraid. At that time, it was every general minister. And he said, your father, I said, my father hasn't done anything. He went to Kojo Yanka, told him, he should suck me from the school what? and bring me back to tech. And that admission is still open. And I said, I am not going back. Weren't you afraid of him? I mean, this is your dad. No. You've seen him from childhood. You know how powerful he is. He made me carry documents and showed me how to be stubborn. But not to rebel against him. He you trained me to be rebellious. But not they, against him. I, he, he trained me. <laughs> he, he trained me. He said I should go and beat that boy and come and show him the strategy. So I'm showing him a strategy for my life. <laughs> but didn't you think that maybe he would be hurt that his little girl is now a woman who has a mind of her own? He was. He, we, we are five. I mean, we are even more. We are about 15 by my, <laughs> my mother's side. We are five. But... Yes. So one is nothing. Yes, yes. I've always <laughs> one been his, yes, I've been his little girl, the last born and all that. But I think he, he he also saw himself in me. So I don't think it came as a surprise. He wished I had gone to tech because you see traditionally you should go to Legon Tech, Kivas. But I didn't think that that would make me who I am. Hmm. And especially the fact that I was a Christian and I believe that God himself would lead you. Yeah to where he wants you to be. So uh, coming down the line, I finished School of Journalism, worked at GIPC, Free Zones, all that. But I, I did journalism. I was in GBC. I practiced journalism a bit. And for some reason, I decided not to continue. Why? <laughs> That's personal. But I used to get a lot of 
advances from men. Ah. And I couldn't take it because uh, I was, was a Christian and it was distracting. And uh, I mean, it was difficult for me that you go to a program and by the time you leave there, you have all these complimentary cards, not of young boys, but people who are... Your dad's age. Yes, and uh, it, so I said, let me get out of the public space. Yeah. But I didn't get out because even PR was in the public space. But in 2015, one morning I was sitting on my bed and I had a call. Now we had reconciled, I would go home and visit him. <laughs> but then he, he said, nay, I said yesterday, he said, where are you? I said, Daddy, I'm sitting on my bed ready to go to work. He said, you know what? I don't know when I will die, but I want to tell you I'm very proud of you. Aww. Yes. When you wanted to do journalism, I didn't understand exactly what it was. But you make me very proud. And any time I see you on TV, I'm so elated. And so for that one, for my daddy to say that I made him proud, if nobody else said it, but my daddy said it, then I was happy. Oh. I mean, that morning he made my, because I always had it at the back of my mind that maybe I should have gone to tech. Maybe I should have listened. Because with all the challenges that you face as a PR person in your profession, there are times that you feel that, did I make a mistake not going to tech to do something? But as resilient as I'm trained to be, and with God's direction in my life, I always take it in my stride and say that these are challenges that can be overcome. Hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about your time at PURC. Mm. <laughs> what made you even decide to take the job? Yeah, because I think it was time. My, my time at PURC was prophetic. Mm -hmm. It was prophetic because in 2003, 2004, I was there in 2004, I got two jobs, PRC and um, Investors Advisory Council. Mm -hmm. During President Kofor's time, who is also my uncle, mm -hmm. there was this Investors Advisory um, Coalition where all the big investors in the world would come and meet quarterly. So they had a secretary. And the guy who was there at the time, one Mr. Amufa, was leaving. Mm -hmm. And when he was leaving, he came to me and said that your uncle wants you to take over for me. And the pay was $5,000. Wow. And I had gone to PRC to do an interview, and the pay was 300 Ghana CDs. <laughs> <laughs> so I was torn between the two. And in Gimpa, I was wait, doing my wait, wait, how are you torn between 300 cities and $5,000? Yes, yeah, so, so my life is not about the monetary aspect of things. Okay, explain it to the rest of us. Yes, because who, who I normally... Who won't be torn between $5,000 and 300 cities? Everything is not money because mm -hmm. money fizzles out very easily. Yeah. Everything is opportunity and relationships. Mm -hmm. If you have a good relationship, you have good opportunities. It's, it caters for the money that you do not have. There are times that money would look very attractive, but you go in there and it might not be what you want. And it's not all about cash. Yeah. So as I was in Gimp, I was doing my master's with uh, Bishop James Sa. Mm -hmm. So I went to him and I said, Bishop, I have these two offers on the table. Which one do I take? I didn't give him any details. So he said, give me two days and I'll come back to you. So after two days, he came back. He said, I saw two places. One was in a very beautiful building, very nice people, well furnished, and it's paying 5,000. I said, Bishop, wow. it's true, yes. And he said, one is paying 300. It is a government, old government building. It's like a bungalow. There's a big mango tree in there, and that is paying 300. But in both places, I saw flowers. Hmm. The one that is the very beautiful place, the flower with it. But the one that is in the government bungalow, the flower blossomed and became bigger than the tree. So it's up to you to choose one. So I said, okay, let me choose the 300. He said, are you sure? I said, yes. Because when God speaks, he knows what he's doing. Yeah. He can walk you through dry land, but at the end of that dry land, there is an oasis. If you look at Abraham and Lot, Lot chose the fertile land. It turned out to be a curse. Abraham chose the dry land. It turned out to be a blessing. So I decided to go to PURC. What were your early days like? 
Ah, to finish that story, the 5,000 job closed down within five months. Wow. Yes. So if you had taken it, you would have been unemployed in five months. Wow. So my early days were, I mean, it has always been challenging. Water, electricity has been challenging. Actually, I was coming from the free zones. I've worked in GIPC free zones, like working with expatriates and all mm -hmm. that. So when I got to, I always say that when I got to the PRC the first day, the first car I saw was a Citroen. Because my other place, the cars were I seen, I said, hey, I ain't found my bag. Then I saw a Mazda. I said, whoa. <laughs> this is a whole new, this is a whole new environment. environment. But what, what excited you about the challenges that you were to face? Yeah, the, the, the people that I met, because I met very grassroots people, people who had genuine problems about their water, their electricity. Whereas in my other previous jobs, I met the expatriates, the whites, the rich people, the businessmen, business community outside Ghana and all that. But here I met people who had issues mm -hmm. and sometimes in talking to them their issues even transcended into personal things yeah. that sometimes you could help mm -hmm. and so it was exciting it was challenging and for me it was a good time yeah. and once it was prophetic it also had an ending so just before i resigned i had the same call from bishop jensa and he said that your time is up hmm. i said bishop he said, yes your time is up was it difficult to let go? No, it wasn't difficult to let go because I had resigned in 2016. I sat on my bed one morning and the Holy Spirit just told me it's time, leave. But when I sent my resignation to the board, they said if I leave, there'll be a vacuum and all that. And I always say that we have to listen to the voice of God instead of the voice of man. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the voice of God will come at a time that you think that you don't know what to do. But he always carves a path for you as he did for the Israelites in the Red Sea. So uh, that is one thing that I, I should have listened to the voice of God. But I listened to the voice of man. So when in 2017, Bishop Sarr called me again and said, I told you your time is up. And I also thought my time was up because I'd done 13 years in PRC. Yeah. I'd done some time, 27 years in public service. That is the major part of my life was to the public service. I didn't have enough time to even look after my son. I didn't have enough time to even remarry because I divorced. And after I divorced, I didn't have the time to even remarry because I didn't have the time to do anything like even dating. Hmm. And Are you single? Yes, I am. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am. So, I mean, I didn't have the time for church work and everything. So at that point, I said I've done my bit. I mean, gone through issues with load shedding, everything. I've done my bit. And um, I thought that it was time for me to back out and let the process continue. How did you handle all the pressure while you were there? God. Because any time I came to you, my friends, my colleagues, I'm a journalist by profession. So for me, I'm not a PR person, I'm a journalist. And the media, they are my colleagues. And I only prayed to God and I said, Holy Spirit, put your words in my mouth for it to be acceptable to the people, no matter how difficult it is. The words that I spoke, I mean, was clearly engineered physically by the board. Mm -hmm. People thought that I increased the tires. Tires were not increased by me as a Naya champion Jantua. It was done by a board and the board, the chairman of the board will tell you, go and say it as palatable as you, you, you would say it. And there were times that I even fought with them mm -hmm. because I thought that some of the things were not very fair, especially in low shedding where you have to increase tires. But it was also necessary. We're talking about issues of fairness, and sometimes you leave everything to go down. And it was necessary. And I, anytime I came out to speak on radio, because all my interviews were on impulse, impromptu, and certainly you need to string your words very well to be able to make an impact, and also calmness. That was a, an, an overriding factor, that anytime I spoke, I should be able to speak to calmness. 
because those days were not very easy yes. days for everybody, yeah. But you made it through. Yes, I did, with, <laughs> it, with, with the help of God on my side. What have you been up to lately? Tell us about Spectra Innovation. Oh, Spectra Innovations is a, um, as the name suggests, is, is a PR communications company that says to bring innovation to companies that come to our door to change their image, to change the way they do things. And normally we put uh, packages and training programs together for whoever is interested to come and do business with her. But most importantly, I've been spending time with my son. These Aww. days we can sit and we chat. We chat about all manner of things. How old is he? He's 24. Wow. It's late, but I think it is <laughs> worth it. So we talk about his girlfriend, and he hasn't got a girlfriend yet. <laughs> both of you are single. Yeah, both of us are <laughs> so single. So you go on dates together. Yes, we dates together. Anytime, then he's talking about the girls in church who are trying to be listening to him. And we chat, and it's good. And... I mean, we laugh and we say, Mommy, you're a comedian. And I say, When you tell somebody I'm a comedian, they will not believe you. So we laugh and all that. It's, I mean, it's been good times. And when he's going to uh, work, you say, Mommy, what time are you coming home? I say, I'm not your girlfriend. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm doing a lot of church work. I mean, now I'm happy being able to spend time with God. We've put together this Magdalene project. And it, is, it stems from Mary Magdalene, who on the Monday, Sunday, went to look for Jesus in the tomb. We come together and we pray. And when women pray, things happen. Yeah. And I mean, I spend my time. And now I can wake up any time I want to. <laughs> You're I, free. Yeah, my free. And my phone is not, it's busy, but it's not as busy as you come back and you see 100 missed calls and all that. And now I, I can sit and do stuff. I can drink coconut um what what time whatever <laughs> eat at your care and do all manner of things how important is that actually living life and enjoying life yeah it's very important i mean i didn't know that you could relax because i haven't relaxed for 27 years and it's good that for me that i can now relax i can just go to kumasi and sit with my my dad is 97 wow. his, his his mind is a bit is not as good as it is. And it, it tells me something. I was telling somebody that um, we need to enjoy life as it is. Because I said to him, my dad, and he asked me 10 times, is that Nanaya? Aww. I said, that is me. Then he said, is that Nanaya? And then, it's me. then the people in the house will tell me I should come more often. Yeah. Because when I get there, his mood yeah. and everything changes. And you say that, oh, how old? I said, OK, I'll take you to the mall. I'll do the thing. <laughs> And we will chat and we see all manner of things and we will laugh. So now I have a free time. The most important is that I can go to Kumasi anytime to see my daddy and mommy. Yeah. And I can go and we chat and we talk. Not looking at my time to say that I have to, I have to go and do an interview. I have to go. Yes, I do miss you guys a lot <laughs> because you are my buddies. But I'm also enjoying life. What advice would you give the 15-year-old version of you looking back at life now standing up to your dad choosing the path that you wanted to go and now enjoying life on your own terms as you see you have to know what you want at 15 you think you are young but you are not too young time passes you by and one thing that i need to also say is that there should be a lot of chastity around the um there are a lot of diseases especially hiv aids and the prevalence rate between the ages of 15 and 29, I've heard, is, is going up. So people, you should be chased, but also as a 15-year-old woman, you should be purposed in your heart to, to go to school, learn a trade, so that you can be on your own. I, I went to school. I didn't end at GIJ. I have three master's degrees. I'm doing a PhD. Yes, and it's good. I mean, when I did my first master's, it took me a lot of time to do do it as a single parent. But I remember I, I would leave Gimpa, rush home to do homework with my son, then drive back to Gimpa for the next morning lecture. So as a 15-year-old, the sky is the limit. You just have to be chaste. You have to be holy. You have to have God on your side. You have to be a God person. Understand that Jesus is in the boat for you and everything will be all right. And any advice for single mothers as well? Yes, yeah, single It's not Chasing easy. Chasing your dreams. It's not easy to be a single mother. And you see, the sad thing is that most of the kids on the streets begging are children of single mothers. You need to purpose in your heart 
you need to know that it is you and God. You should have God in the middle of it, and you should have also some family member. There is, you should always have a helper. Hmm. You should find a divine helper. You should find somebody who guide you. I was lucky to get somebody who gu guided me and always told me when I had all those issues with this one wants to have an affair with you, this one loves you, that person would just tell me that Nanaya, they are not interested in you. And he will sit and say that, look, let me, I say, yes, I'm a Christian. I'm not going to do anything. He said, yes, I want to emphasize it. But if you need help, I will do this, I will do that, I will do that. Everybody needs somebody like that. And I also have the sparrow's nest where we look after single parents, especially yeah. women. I mean, it's very, very important. I've been single for some time in my life. Mm -hmm. And I got married well, right, but it's unfortunate I divorced. Mm -hmm. So we need to be strong for the children. And for that, I was strong for my son. And I made sure that I didn't, my career and my son, and I didn't bring in any relationship. Maybe now I'm ready. She's ready. I didn't bring in any relationship and dates to disrupt it. I made sure that it is my son and my yeah, job, job. And always got a job, um, developed myself to get to a level where that I'll be able to make that boy comfortable. As my responsibility. Thank you so much, yeah. Nanaya Jajwa, for welcome. being with us and spending your morning with us. And Thank I've you. learned so much from our conversation. Number one, be fearless, right? <laughs> Live life on your own terms and have priorities. So if your child or your job is your priority, make that commitment. And don't forget to enjoy life. Drink some coconut. <laughs> <laughs> I have a message here. I have a bunch of messages, but I'll read one. Greetings. Good morning. I'm Christopher from Accra, New Town. I think. Madame Nanaya Jantua is very calm, and I think from this interview, I've learned something to guide my life, and that is focus. You can see from the onset of her life, she was focused and believed in herself. God bless her. She should advise some of us that are still seeking for job opportunities after our degree. How can I stay, still stay focused amidst all this no job? issue. Do you have any answer? Yes, I think that you see one thing that my dear we are doing is I think we are focused on the formal sector. I want a job in the bank. People have talents. It's possible. So be an entrepreneur. Yes. Like you yeah, are. Yes. <laughs> he has talent. He should start early. Okay. So do something that he thinks he can do okay. and he'll be big. Thank you yes. very much. Yeah, Start okay. early and do something you think you, you'll be good at. Do yes. not go anywhere. Thank you so much, Nanaya, for being with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>